So today we're going to be looking at our first form of statistical inference for two independent group data. Before we can do that, however, we need to talk about some of the assumptions and corresponding conditions. So for this type of data, an assumption that we have to make is that the sampling distribution of x bar sub 1 minus x bar sub 2 has a normal distribution. To verify that that assumption is true, we have to do what's called checking conditions. And for these problems, we're going to say that either both samples have to be large or both samples have to come from populations that are normally distributed. In addition, because of the type of data, we also have to be able to verify that the populations are independent of one another, essentially meaning that one group's measurements isn't going to affect the other. If we can verify these conditions, then we know that those assumptions are valid. So now we're going to look at our first inference, which is trying to decide if crossing an intersection is quickened when you're stared at. So we're going to walk through this process using a hypothesis test, and we're going to test using an alpha of 0.05. So we want to see if there's sufficient evidence to suggest that being stared at causes you to cross an intersection more quickly. So just as before, we are going to start with step one, where we identify the population. But now we actually have two populations. So here we have to be um, considerate of which group we want to show has a larger mean. And in this problem, there is a question on which mean is larger. And so we want to make the one that we're trying to show has a larger mean the first group. So because we want to show that time to cross an intersection is quicker for people who are stared at, that means their time should be less, and so that would be population two. So this would be all drivers who are stared at. And that means that the first population is the group that we think would be the largest, and that would be all drivers who are not stared at. So again, because we're comparing two groups now, it's important for us to consider which group we expect to be larger, and then it would make the most sense to put that as population one. So then when we define our samples, we'll connect them to the population that we had listed above. So sample one and sample two. So sample one is going to be the 14 drivers who we're not stared at. And that means that sample two is going to be the 13 drivers who were stared at. Again, it corresponds to what we have up there for population one and population two. Now, finally, and this is something that we add that's not in the book, I like to define what we call the parameter of interest. And for these problems, we're looking for the difference in two population means. So our parameter of interest is mu sub 1 minus mu sub 2. So it'll be the same way that we've defined mu's in the past. It's just now we have two to define. So we'll start with mu sub 1. And because 1 is going to correspond to population 1, we will be defining the not stared at as population 1 or mu sub 1. So it would be mean time to cross an intersection. For drivers not stared at. And to emphasize that that's my first group, in parentheses behind it, I'm going to put mu sub 1. And then we're going to subtract from that. And the only thing that will change here is my population. So it's still mean time to cross an intersection. But now my population is going to be drivers who are stared at. And again, to emphasize that that's the second group, I'm going to put mu sub 2 in parentheses behind it. Now we'll move to step 2. So now looking at step 2, we're going to make our hypotheses for this problem. 
So we still have the null H sub O colon and the alternative H sub A colon. And we have the notation mu1 and mu2, remember from our parameter definition. So now our research hypothesis is going to be in our alternative. And we wanted to show that population 1 was going to cross more slowly, meaning that their time was greater. And so we're trying to show that mu1's time to cross an intersection is greater than mu2, which means our corresponding null hypothesis is going to be mu sub 1 is less than or equal to mu sub 2. So after we state our null and alternative, we're going to go into our testing, which is in step 3. Now remember, there are three parts to step 3. The first one is our assumption, and from what we talked about at the beginning of this video, we have to assume the sampling distribution of x bar 1 minus x bar 2 is the normal distribution. And then from past data, we actually know that both samples are from normal populations. And we wouldn't expect that the time to cross an intersection for people who are stared at would affect people who are not. So we can also say that um, our populations are independent. So that means that we've just verified the assumption we made in letter A because in letter B our conditions are met. So because of that, we can calculate our test statistic. And so for these problems, we're going to be using T. And the formula for that is x bar 1 minus x bar 2, that's the numerator, divided by what's called standard error. And that will do s sub 1 squared over n sub 1 plus s sub 2 squared over n sub 2. So we have all of those measurements up here at this table. And so I will be plugging those in. So x bar sub 1 is 6.63 because that was from the first group. And then we have 5.59 as x bar sub 2. s sub 1 is 1.36 and we're going to square that over n sub 1, which is 14. And then we'll add to that our s sub 2, which is 8.22 squared divided by 13. So all of this is coming from these measurements. Remember the stared at group was the second group that we ended up having. And that means that our not stared at group was group 1. So if you do that calculation, you come up with a test statistic of approximately 2.42. So now armed with that test statistic, we're going to move into step 4, which is making our decision. So now moving into step 4, we're going to be making our decision. And so the very first part is to state what the test statistics distribution is. So because we have a T, we're using the T distribution. And we're going to use conservative degrees of freedom. So there's a formula that you can use that approximates degrees of freedom, but it's very intense. And instead of using that, we're going to use what's called conservative degrees of freedom. And that is going to be taking the smaller n and subtracting 1 from it. So for our problem, our smaller n was 1, or excuse me, um, 13, and so subtracting 1 from that, we have 12 degrees of freedom. So next we have to find our p-value, and to do that, we're going to draw the curve, and then we're going to place our test statistic on it. We had 2.42 as our test statistic. And then remember that our alternative was mu1 is greater than mu2, so that means we're interested in the area above the test statistic. So when you use the calculator's TCDF function, you're going to be going from 2.42 up to positive infinity, and then you'll state that it's 12 degrees of freedom, because remember that's necessary to tell the curve what, or to tell the calculator what curve you're dealing with. 
So that would result in a p-value of 0 0.016. So because that p-value is small, meaning it's less than our level of significance or alpha of 0.05, we're going to make the decision to reject the null hypothesis. So then our last step to make an inference, because we rejected, we'll say that there's sufficient evidence to suggest. And then we're going to restate our parameters, but in place of where we had minus, we're going to put how we wanted to compare the two, which remember is to show that mu1 is greater than mu2. So there's sufficient evidence to suggest the mean time to cross an intersection for drivers not stared at is greater than mean time for drivers who are stared at. So essentially we show that there is sufficient evidence to suggest being stared at makes you uncomfortable and makes you cross an intersection more quickly.